Dune Part 1 and Part 2 are both exceptional movies. They've got amazing storytelling and just incredible visuals. So I thought I may as well try and recreate a scene from one of them in Blender. So here's how I did it. Of course, I started off by looking for the right scene to recreate. I came up with a few options, but eventually I settled on this one because I thought it wouldn't be too easy to create, but it also seemed like it had some challenges that would help me get better at Blender. In Blender, firstly, I started off by trying to create the Atreides spice ship in the image here. I gathered some of my reference in a pure ref file and I just started moving some cubes around, extruding, pulling stuff around just to try and get these basic shapes first and then I could add the details later. Now, texturing this ship was probably the thing that I spent the most time on when I recreated this scene. Just because in my reference from the movie, you could tell that it was textured very well and it had so much grunge and so many layers of like sand and dust on this ship. However, the techniques that I used were quite simple. And I talk about this in all my videos because this is the thing that takes your texturing to the next level. So you get some images from textures.com or you can even just look up grunge. And I use that as the factor in a mixed color node to control where you, you place uh, another color, you know, color B. So for example, I started off with these two base colors and then I get a picture of some leaking grunge, right? And use that as a factor to drive in some darker colors. So then these darker colors would look like, you know, leaking grunge. You add a color ramp to the image and bring that contrast up so that, you know, the grunge is more obvious. And I literally just did that probably like 20 times or something for the majority of the texturing on the ship. And what you do with a mixed color setup that really elevates your texture is use that final output from your mixed color node that's going into your color, move that into a color ramp that goes into your roughness, and then do the same for metallic if you want. Also, make sure when you plug your mixed color value into the color ramp into the roughness, make sure you, that you change the color ramps values. This is something that I always do now and it actually really helped in this scene because basically what I did is I changed the black value, black is zero, which means completely shiny. So I changed that zero to something like 0.4 so that when you drag that contrast up between your, your 0.4 and your one for white, you don't get completely shiny bits and it just makes it look a whole lot more realistic. Oh and yeah, of course I added in the floor as well, which was just plain simple and uh, the texturing for that was literally just the same texturing for the um, ship. It's just image texture and then use that as the factor to mix two colors together. Did that a couple of times and it looked pretty nice. Before I got really deep into the texturing and I decided to add in these like the army in the bottom near the ships which is just a, a model of Sketchfab that I added into Mixamo which you can you know you can import your own characters in Mixamo which is awesome. I found a pose of them standing, added that in Blender, got rid of the rest of the keyframe so it was just you know one pose and then used the array modifier to just add a bunch of them so yeah that was the army done and then of course there's the guys holding the flag that's just the same guy that's that's duplicated in the army and then all i did for the flag was just a plane subdivided a bunch with a cloth sim and you know wind pointing in the right direction and that was that super simple but adding in these uh people added a huge sense of scale a lot of my time that i spent on this scene was texturing I spent a lot of trying trying to get that ship and the front to look like the ship from the actual movie so i had gotten to this point where it was all just these grunge images applied on top of each other and it looked fine but it kind of looked plain and i realized from the movie there's quite a few like lines in the ship which kind of gives it some directionality and breaks up just the i don't know leaking grunge so what i did is i got this wave texture made sure it was on the right axes and just used that as a factor to multiply in a darker color so that you get these lines around the ship However, I'd also recommend whenever you use procedural textures like the wave texture to multiply it with another procedural texture, which is what I did. I multiplied it with a noise texture to break up this straight line because otherwise it just looks completely fake. But when you add a little bit of grunge to it with the noise texture, it starts looking a lot more realistic. I also use another node that I don't think I've ever used before. It's actually the wireframe node, which is normally used to show the topology of your model because basically what it does is it, it triangulates your faces by adding diagonal lines in. So I found this wireframe node added that in and realized I could use that to add in some bump and also some color to add in these diagonal lines because it'd be a lot easier to do it procedurally. Well, it's not actually procedural, but to do it in the shader than using all these booleans and stuff because I'm not super well versed in that. So anyways, I added in that wireframe node 
and use that to drive the bump and the color as I've said. So after doing a couple more hours on the texturing, it was looking pretty good and I felt like I could spend like six more hours on texturing and just keep multiplying in grunge and doing all this stuff. But I decided I just need to finish this and get a render out of it and get what I learned out of it and you know, just finish it. So that's what I did. I duplicated these spice brigades even more, adding them in the background. Um, adding more armies in the background. I also um, got a different walking animation from Mixamo, added that to the SWAT army people, so there was some, you know, walking in the foreground. I also made this the model that you see on, like, camera right, which was just another cube that I added the boolean to. Pretty simple there. And then I also added in some volume over the whole scene. You know, classic, can't go without it. And uh, after adding all that in, I did realize that the ship had a part in the back that you can see from the scene that I didn't recreate because I didn't notice it. And also by the time I noticed it, I just didn't feel like modeling it. And to be honest, I kind of suck at modeling. So I ended up trying for a while. I got too frustrated. I wasn't sure how to do it. And I just said, you know, it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be down to the exact detail from the original shot. So let's just move on and render it and put it into Photoshop, which is where um, the magic happens and it just got to the next level. So in Photoshop, I did try using some other render layers because I did render out like the AO map, the depth pass and all these things but I didn't really end up using them. Maybe that's because I don't know how to use them very well and I'm not a very good compositor, which I do need to learn. But in the end, the thing that made the most difference was blurring the image a bit. You make sure to do that for all your renders because everything's so sharp out of 3D. Then I added in some grain, which, oh, it always makes it look so much nicer. Grain's just awesome. And then lastly, the camera raw filter, which in Photoshop is like the same as Lumetri Color and After Effects or it's the same as color grading in DaVinci Resolve. So it's just, you know, adding, bringing up the whites, bringing down the shadows, adding in some vibrance, some saturation, some texture, adding in some vignetting. And uh, another thing I did was I also pulled the mid-tones more towards a yellow. Yeah, and then it was basically done. So yeah, with the scene done, I was really happy with how it looked. Um, I had a lot of fun making it in Blender, and the truth is, before I made this scene, I was actually getting a little bit annoyed in Blender. Blender was getting a bit frustrating, and just, I just didn't want to make anything. But I decided that I needed to do something, so after seeing Dune 2, I thought, may as well make something from the Dune series. So I found this image, and just got ahead in creating it. So, if Blender is feeling a bit annoying right now, or you're not sure what to create, go to your favourite movie or something that inspired you recently, find a still from it, and make it yourself in Blender. It's a really good way to practice and also just to have fun. Now, if you wanna see more of me creating scenes in Blender, make sure you go check out this video about how I made a gas station in Blender. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. Make sure to like and subscribe and uh, keep going with Blender. You got this.